Hello, my name is Temur and I'm a PhD student at the Institute of Biomedicine at the University of Eastern Finland. And I'm presenting our research which is based around the robust comparison of multi-omics clustering methods for subtype discovery in chronic diseases. And as you may know, modern sequencing technologies have allowed us to collect high quality data across multiple uh, different molecular features and the uh, aspiration for this data is to allow us to discover the driving mechanisms behind chronic diseases which are known to be highly heterogeneous and there are many multi-integration and clustering algorithms that have been developed to find uh, subtypes that are based on multiple omics but uh, in our research we found that there were two main issues with uh, the comparative studies uh, that were done previously and that were those were the lack of consideration for covariates like age and the stage of the cancer and then the clustering stability or the sensitivity of the algorithm to small differences in the uh, input data composition for example just removing uh, some of the patients we would expect that the clustering result would be the same or might expect we would want it to be but often that is not the case so we primarily focused focused on the messenger RNA, microRNA, DNA methylation, copy number variations, and we used popular methods with different principles such as the affinity network fusion, the I cluster plus, and the integrative non negative mat matrix factorization. Then we also tested uh, the multi omics factor analysis, which we then applied standard clustering algorithms like k means on top of. And in addition to those methods, we also tested uh, kernel-based methods, specifically the multiple kernel k-means with matrix-induced uh, regularization. Moreover, we wanted to test existing kernel-based methods that also integrate previous biological knowledge in the form of uh, pathway networks. And for this, we used Keck pathways and we filtered them based on known associations to uh, the diseases, for example, the cancer hallmarks and the, the associated pathways. And then we evaluated using the standard uh, clustering quality metrics, as well as the stability and survival, which we already highlighted. And we basically collected these methods and the framework in an R package, which is available at the link shown on the screen. For data, so far we've built four case studies from TCJ cancer datasets. And the idea was to create a few increasingly challenging uh, clustering case studies, which are shown on, on this table. And the number of samples and the mortality rate differ significantly between these uh, data sets. And actually for the prostate cancer, we used the progression-free survival since the mortality rate was too low. And here we have the stability results, which were generated by resampling the data set multiple times by using uh, cross-fault validation repeated several times and where the um, results were compared to a reference obtained from the full data. And basically we used the Jacquard index to measure uh, the overlap of the pairs of patients that belong to the same cluster in the reference and the new result. And then 
we can see here that there are some some methods that do not obtain high stability but uh, ANF, the InternMF and the linear kernel were the most stable. As for survival results, uh, these are p-values based on a likelihood ratio test between a baseline model which uses or includes just the covariage which were the age and cancer, cancer stage and then an augmented model which also includes a cluster indicator variable. Based on these results we can see that many clustering algorithms struggle to yield significant uh, clusters from the viewpoint of survival. But methods like InternMF and MOFAT2 as well as the kernel k-means seem to perform well in at least uh, some number of clusters. In summary, many of the popular clustering methods such as iCluster and uh, MOFA tend to have issues with uh, clustering stability. And the kernel-based pathway integration shows some promise, but it tended to introduce instability in the results, which should be resolved before they can uh, be considered. And finally, the InternMF was one of the most reliable methods in producing both high relevance and good stability.